building after not being able to have you here all year. So welcome and thanks again for joining us for a big continuation. My name is Libby Bryant and I'm the school director here at College Bay Middle School. Good evening, class of 2025. Congratulations on wrapping up what has undoubtedly been one of the most unique and challenging school years of our lives. We are so proud of the ways in which you weather the craziness and intensity of this school year. You adapted to new technology, safety protocols, and classroom routines, figured out how to learn remotely, in person, and hybrid, and still became better readers, writers, scientists, artists, mathematicians, historians, linguists, and human beings. You took 2021 by the horns and finished your middle school careers with hard work and determination. Congratulations. Middle school is often regarded as one of the most challenging times in a student's K-12 experience. Students start the sixth grade as little people, and it takes most students a full year to adapt to the realities of middle school. Harder coursework, new social dynamics, and a desire for complete independence to fact, despite the fact that you're not quite ready for it. We have the pleasure of seeing kids start the sixth grade as young people and literally transform right before our eyes. Academically, they prepare for the rigor of their high school coursework. We wish them to be stronger readers and writers, think more critically, analyze more effectively, and make arguments that are supported with research and evidence. Personally, they learn more about who they are. Loyal friends, kind classmates, hardworking students, well-loved sons and daughters, and who they hope to become. Doctors, teachers, activists, engineers, journalists. Students, we've told you tirelessly that we aim to prepare you for college, and we do. But we also aim to support you in being whoever and whatever you wish to be in the world. We are excited to celebrate your continuation into high school tonight. Congratulations on three years of hard work and through a pandemic nonetheless. We are so proud of who you've become and can't wait to see what's in store as you move into high school, college, and beyond. So with that, I'm excited to kick off our ceremony tonight and pass it off to Ms. Hicks, our first staff speaker. Hello everyone. Thank you all so much for taking the time to be here tonight. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ms. Hicks, and I have the great pleasure of teaching reading to all of these excellent eighth graders. The other day, I was in Ms. TC's office in Capria. While Capria was working, I was peering around Ms. TC's office, looking at pictures of her smiling little boys and family members. And then something caught my eye. Something that I've seen before, talked about before, but haven't thought about in several years. It is a quote by Theodore Roosevelt, and it goes like this. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. Now I think the words here are very intimidating. So we're going to look at this line by line as any good English scholar would do, like all of you are now. Roosevelt starts by saying that it is not the critic who counts. We know that a critic is someone who criticizes or judges someone or something. And we know that when something says it is not the one who counts, this tells us that it isn't the person who is judging or watching who really matters. He is telling us that other people, other people who are judging us, they're not the ones who should be guiding us. The credit belongs to the ones who are actually in the arena. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena. What does this mean? The 
The most important person is not the one who thinks you should be doing something a certain way or judges you for doing things your way. The most important person is the one who is actually trying. The person who is standing there, giving it their all. Whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. And that person is you. Roosevelt goes on to say that the one who counts is the one doing the work. The one in the arena, he says. If he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. Now this is not news to any of you, but students who are going to fail, maybe not a class, but maybe you won't make a sports team or get that job you always wanted. You are going to fail time and again, and that is okay. But at least you tried. At least you were daring greatly. When you go out into the world to high school and jobs and careers, I hope you all are proud of yourselves because you dared to try, and that is what matters most. It is not the critic who counts. It is the man in the arena. You all will be in the arena, you probably already have been, and it isn't easy. My hope, my biggest hope for all of you, is that you fight hard. You keep fighting hard until you are proud of yourselves. And your fight will look different from others. Your journey will be identical to no one else's. And every single day, when you decide to show up, step up, work hard, you are already daring greatly. And don't do it for me. Don't do it for candy, or a new phone, or an adult in your life. Do it for you, because you owe yourself that. You are the one standing and fighting in the arena, so make yourself proud. People will remember the hard workers, the kindness and generosity. So as you say goodbye to eighth grade and hello to high school, remember to be the person who fights hard. Remember to be the person who is kind, who invites others to join you, who is inclusive and humble, and you will be successful. I want to close with one of my favorite poems from Ralph Waldo Emerson. He is talking about success. What is success? To laugh often and much. To win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children. To appreciate the beauty. To find the best in others. To leave the world a bit better whether by a healthy child or a garden patch. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Thank you. We're now going to watch a quick video that the eighth grade teachers have put together. So, all right, um, on this day, you all are going to be high school students soon enough, uh, but for a short while, you remain in middle school. And so, one of the things that really struck me this year, um, it was kind of like a vacation to come into school and to have students, like live students around you. Um, and I think one of the things that I appreciate the most um, was Hyro. Hyro Arnaldez, my dude. Uh, we would have some conversations in here. You were a human being. I appreciated it. Um, you made me think about some things that, uh, you know, still make me smile. Anyway, uh, A2 in general, y'all like brought in a uh, great conversation. I love the morning to the RG and Tyler. Uh, you know what, this year has been unforgettable in many ways. Um, and I definitely remember all of those things, but you know, going to high school, um, my hope for all of you is that uh, you believe in yourselves and you believe in who you are and where you're coming from and you really rely on your values. Hi, Lady Craig. I am so, so proud of each and every one of you who are working so hard this school year. I know it wasn't easy, but you have all shown so much courage, perseverance, and resilience, and I couldn't imagine getting through this school year with
with another class. I want to give a special shout out to sections 801 and 803 for truly making reading this year unforgettable. You have grown so much as readers, writers, and thinkers, and I can't wait to see what the future has in store for you. Congratulations on finishing eighth grade, and good luck next year in high school. I'm proud of this eighth grade class because, well, for many reasons, but the main reason boils down to the fact that they had to push through more challenges, more changes, more uncertainty than any other class of students has ever had to face in their lives. And they took it all in stride. They were patient with us as teachers and as a school, and everything that they accomplished, they owed it themselves. And I hope that this class, from this experience, takes away the knowledge that if you can get through this year, you can get through anything. And every single one of them not only made it through this year, but like earned the accomplishment of making it through this year. So congratulations to this class, and we all can't wait to see what you do next.
how bright you are. So driven and you know, thoughtful of your work and dedicated and new things. Everyone's going to be new things. Congratulations. Amy Gray, I'm so, so proud of you. You guys did such an amazing job in art. Keep making work and come visit me. I'm going to miss you. To my effect, it was a pleasure being here in my service and tourism this morning. To Hope Room 801, thank you so much for providing conversation, laughter, and engagement to our audience. And to my students, I truly appreciate all the effort that you performed into the scholastic year. I also want to acknowledge that we had a ton of patience when it came to me teaching online. Whether it was sharing the internet screen or if you want to realize that I was muted multiple times. To the entire class of 2025, you did it well. Or, as the social media world says, you did good. Felicidades, 8th grade. Les deseo todo lo mejor. Class of 2025. God, I love you so much. Uh, I feel so honored to have talked to you. Uh, I'm sitting in front of the best friend I've ever had before. It's our last day of this grade. Ms. Dennell's advisory and great teachers. Uh, I got one of the you guys signed in. Um, and at the end of that day, we had a couple of fun. It was a field day. It was amazing. And just kind of set the tone for the following to you today in this school. And I wish you the best. I'll be here and I'm going anywhere. So please come down and visit. And I hope to see you all be successful in the next level. Peace out. That was all Ms. Martucci, by the way, who put that together. So we do a quick round of applause for her. She got it. She got it. Uh, I'm Ms. Costanzo, and I have the pleasure to work with four amazing individuals that are going to speak at your ceremony tonight. Uh, so I'm going to get out of the way, and I'm going to invite them up here. So Josephine, come on up. Eileen, Paulina, and Mike, you guys come on up. Hello, my name is Mike Perez, and welcome to our 8th grade continuation class of 2025. 
middle school has a, a, has had a big impact on students. It gives us knowledge, it gives us friends, but most importantly, it gives us memories. Memories that we will carry on in life, memories that we will remind us about how much we have matured. I really appreciate those memories along with those who have helped me make these memories. And I would like to give a special thanks to all of my teachers for helping me get a step closer to graduate. I would also like to thank Ms. Brian for being a very great principal and we will miss you dearly and hope that you will come visit us again soon. Thank you. Yelling over each other, 
And about half of you would slip up and confuse me like, I'm trying, I'm trying to do something wrong. But it was really just the other class. But in all honesty, I've enjoyed really every minute with you. I've enjoyed watching you struggle and work to become better writers. I've loved watching you compete in athletics and be charitable members of the community and celebrate each other's successes. I mean, we just finished the year with a student organized dress down day to raise money for kids in foster care. If that doesn't speak to the type of people you are, I don't know what does. You've been incredible in trying to grow as students, classmates, friends, and as human beings. I know this past year and a half has been weird, but I hope you've had a great middle school experience. And I hope I contributed to you to make it special. Because whether or not I'm going to like this, whether I'm going to like it, you will never forget this past year. I've been next to you through a lot of highs and lows over the past couple of years, so I feel like I genuinely know you as me. And I want to thank you for letting me be me. I've truly never been so comfortable with you. So I have a few words of wisdom for you to live your lives by as you continue to grow and move on to this next chapter of the journey. If you remember a few weeks ago in writing class, we read this poem called How to Be a Person. And in this poem, the author provides some sage advice about how he thinks people should carry themselves. I'd like to give my own version of this to you. So I'm really sorry if you thought we were going to escape tonight without hearing one more example of this circumstance. Number one, always find a way to smile in every situation. It will benefit you and everyone else around you, even in the most difficult times. And if you're in a tough situation, you need a bright one. Number two, looks, social media trends, athleticism, material possessions, and yes, even relationships, will fade in time. And in the end, people only remember you for how you treat them. So be kind, listen, and help others. Number three, chewing on pens is awesome. And so is surviving a car crash. One. Number four, always find a way to challenge yourself in everything that you do. And if what you're doing is interesting or hard enough, then find something new. Life is boring without a challenge. Number five, work harder than all of the people around you. Period. Anything you get out of this world is a direct product of what you put in. I'm sure you've experienced this with studies, extracurriculars, athletics, that the only person who can beat you can beat you. Number six, never let go of a friend who would sit on the couch, eat junk food with you, and listen to your problems. You should try to meet as many people as you can, but only surround yourself with people who deserve it. I will also speak from experience when I say that some of my closest friends are my strongest relationships. So set a reminder on your phone, you can have your people every now and then. Life sucks without true friends. Number seven, life is hard, unfair, and it just plain sucks at times. Stop complaining and embrace it. It's called living. Number eight, if you do have a really hard day, though, there's nothing that chicken wings in your favorite food. So let yourself regroup and make the next day the best one. Number nine, never hold back to help someone how you feel. This goes for good and bad situations. Bottling it up leads to regret, bad grudges, which only hurts you in the long run. Even if it doesn't work out the way you want it to, you'll have kept nothing. Number ten, if you ever find yourself asking, is this a cool hat? Or should we try that drive? Should we try to drive through sushi place? The answer is no. Ever. Whether you need to put the hat back or keep driving, just realize that you're going to have really dumb thoughts in life. And that's okay. Just try to limit them for the sake of everyone around you. Number 11, when it comes to relationships, people value intelligence. So never feel like you have to act dumb just to make someone comfortable. You're smart, turn it into a weapon. And if someone is threatened by that, they don't deserve it. My sister's so nice to you. Number 12, only try to worry about things that are under your control. 
Anything else you need to think? Number 13, life is short. But also, life is pretty long. So take every opportunity you can to live life to the fullest, as long as it doesn't shorten your last day. Number 14, don't forget about any of your teachers. This amazing advice we've all been giving you isn't always free. So please come visit us every now and then, because I'll bet some of them miss you. I'll stop at 14. One lesson from each of your lives so far. I love you all, and I'm extremely proud of you. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I'm actually up first in introducing Elijah, which is really cool. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Mason to come on up here. Because um, as you guys know, we've been splitting in Elijah all, all year, and these kids are as much as they are on. But these kids have been incredible. Uh, the absolute best part I can speak for both of us for our advisory was our Wednesday check-ins. Every single Wednesday, we've got a lot of kids, we've got 18 kids in our advisory. We're like, you know what, every Wednesday, we're going to split them up, we're going to call them every week. And some of you turn your cameras on, some of you just respond in the chat, but um, we love those. They were the best part of our week every week, for sure. Right. Thank you. Um, so first student we have here is Milan Dolphy. Uh, next up we have Philip Durang. Awesome, and then we have Peter Hernandez. Sweet, so we have Tessa. Next up, we have Chauncey Lachlan. And then Ariel Parker Gong. Angel Mosquera. Isabel Nava. Ryan Wen. Cairo Ordonez. Esmeralda Faria. Tahani Brascon. Charmaine Rivas. Jacqueline Sanchez. <laughs> Kevin Silva. <laughs> Jordan Sosa. <laughs> Isaiah Tomita. <laughs> Justin Villanueva. Ian Wen. Awesome, and that is all for my circumstances advisory. Now we have Ms. Purvis's advisory coming up.
Regardless, you guys are exceptional, and I am so honored to have been your advisor. Thank you for being a part of my life all year. And now, if you will please all rise, and as you advise me, I mean stand up. <laughs> Thank you. First up is Santiago Gonzalez.
This is said to pick a black too quickly. Um, what I really want you guys to take away from your eighth grade year and from me in general um, is that at, at the beginning of the year, my instructions to you, and I believe to you too, maybe too, were get all you can out of it. And as a whole, that's what your teachers want, is for you to get all you can out of all of us. We want you to take. We want to be that resource for you, whatever you need, whether it's your academics, whether it's life, whether it's what was for lunch today when you were good, right? We want to be there for you in a way that just says, use us. And I hope that you can continue to do that and know that that forms connections with the people like this that work with you every year from now until you're done with college. People want to be of service to you in the same way that you want to be of service to the people that you work with, that you live with, that you love. Um, and I'm just so excited to see what all of you do um, over the next four years and four more and maybe six more. Um, you all have a very, very bright path ahead of you. So thank you very much. And with that, um, I believe we have some certificates here, beginning with Oscar Augusto Portillo. Juan Bartolo Gonzalez.
Miss Perez. Thursday and Friday, so please make sure that you are online or in the building. 